Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkofer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's episode is on the question of does playing soccer increase the risk of concussion? And I think this is an important one for everyone to understand, especially uh, parents, because there has been a lot of talk about how contact sports like uh, like football, hockey, maybe lacrosse can all be more or at more risk for concussions than other sports, whether that be basketball or volleyball or cross country, track, or even soccer. And and this can obviously um, make or specific choices or change decisions for parents or even student athletes that are wanting to play certain sports. Um, and I think it's it should be clear that there are definitely certain sports that increase the risk of concussion, while other sports don't. But again, there are things that we can do to uh, prevent concussions as well, whether that be more with the brain and visually, or with diet and nutrition. And so. To start, I just want to say soccer, playing soccer does increase the risk of concussions, and this can be as high as other sports, other contact sports, like football and hockey. And the reason why is mostly because of um, with soccer and without being able to use one's hand, um, the head becomes another hand. The head becomes another object that the ball can be moved and redirected. And so I want to talk about a couple articles that have looked at the, the brain imaging um, and the brain changes in soccer players, um, how heading can affect those areas, and then also how heading can affect functional uh, and cognitive impairment as well. And so let's go right to a couple of these articles here. Um, So the first one is the effects of soccer heading on brain structure and function. It's in Frontiers of Neurology, so a great journal out of March 2016. And we're going to talk first about the abstract a little bit, and then we'll go through a couple of their, this is a review article, so we'll go through a couple of those studies. Basically, soccer is the most popular sport in the world, we know that. Um, and there are professional amateurs, um, there's a lot of high school and a lot of little kids even. Um, and it's actually a most common first sport or first team sport for little kids. Um, it is the only sport in which participants purposely use their head to hit the ball. Uh, heading is considered as offensive or defensive move, whereby the player's unprotected head is used deliberately to impact the ball and direct it into play. Um, so again, by using the head directly, that can directly cause um, more cumulative damage onto, onto the head and therefore the brain. Um, a soccer player can be subjected to an average of six to 12 incidents of heading per competitive game. Um, the ball can reach at high velocities, and then even in practice, heading training can be involved. Um, and these are more lower velocities and are more common, generally because they're just practicing hitting the ball with their head. Um, so the role of subconcussive impacts, as it can occur during heading, has recently gained much attention considering that it could represent an additional mechanism of cumulative brain injury. And so this study looked at all the different um, effects of soccer, especially soccer heading, on athletes that have played soccer. And so they looked at the association between heading and abnormal brain structure, um, and they saw that there was also subconcussive head impacts can cause cognitive impairment, where other findings said um, not so much. And so I want to go through and look at some of this. Before we do that, we're going to talk quickly in the introduction. Again, up to 22% of all soccer injuries are concussions, which are a lot. Um, you would think soccer is mostly um, leg injuries, hamstring, um, ankles, a lot, of, a lot of things like rolling ankles. Um, but concussion rates are up, and concussion rates in soccer are comparable to and often exceed those of other contact sports like football and ice hockey. Um, heading was responsible for 30.6% of concussions among boys, 25.3% among girls. Um, and most frequently is heading related concussions where player to player contact, player like one, one shoulder hit the head or, or two heads hit uh, when trying to dispute the ball. So that's pretty common. Um, 
So let's go right into a couple of these studies that, that they looked at. So in neuroimaging studies, um, there are different in MRI, diffuse tensor image MRIs, looking at more the white matter of the brain. So here, there's a high frequency of heading was associated with lower FA. This is basically lower white matter at three different locations um, in the temporoccipital region. So temporoccipital is looking more at the visual, the hearing, the memory centers. Um, there's also greater cortical thinning with increasing age uh, in different regions. Uh, and here, one didn't see any any, any uh, changes between soccer or controls. Um, they looked at biochemical markers as well. Biochemical markers, so this S100B is a marker of damage in, in the brain. And so they were elevated after heading compared to normal exercise, uh, elevated after game, um, increased match groups, there's higher training groups. So there's a lot of evidence um, that that soccer or that heading the ball can cause inflammation in the brain, can cause uh, structural damage. And if we look at functional uh, functional studies here, sorry, this is taking so long. Okay, functional studies. So this one, this is looking at male professional soccer players. Uh, they look at long-term exposure. 81% of soccer players had a mild to severe deficit in tests of attention, concentration, memory, and judgment, compared to only 40% of the controls. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty significant. Uh, here's another one with males. Soccer players had poor performance in verbal and visual memory, planning, and visual perceptual processing tasks. Uh, male and female amateur soccer players. Soccer players performed worse than swimmers on conceptual thinking. Here's another one that we looked at. So soccer players with the highest self-reported estimates of heading had lower or scored lower on tests of verbal learning, verbally based conceptual performance, planning, attention, informational processing. Again, these are all cognitive things. These are things that a lot of times we take for granted, um, but something that we want as we age. And so it may not be that these, these athletes had um, headaches or or other autonomic issues, or any pain syndromes, but they may have problems with their cognitive aspect. I really like this one. So performance of soccer players was worse than that of rugby in non-contact sports players with divided attention. Divided attention is basically being able to dual task. We need our white matter. We need our connections between multiple brain regions in order to have divided attention. So I really like that article. Um, it shows a lot of those uh, those effects of heading in soccer. And then here's another one from 2017 um, called May Heading in Soccer Result in Traumatic Brain Injury. This is a very short article, but I wanted to just emphasize a couple points. Again, the results here when they looked at a couple of reviews, the consequences of head injury are evident as chronic changes in cognition, including disturbances in concentration, slowing of mental and physical agility. And so there is a um, this chronic, maybe they have cumulative effects of soccer and head play, okay? Um, so we kind of talked about those things. I want to get to something that everyone should be worried about, and that's recommendations for the game. So basically these recommendations are to improve safety, especially for young, young children, because we have a lot of four, five, six, seven, eight-year-olds playing soccer, and they may be playing soccer from when they're, very young to when they're in their 20s. And we should be able to diminish a lot of this, a lot of this contact and cumulative damage, just like we would in other sports, um, like football, hockey, rugby. And so soccer is a contact sport where concussions are possible and severe head injuries are as well. The players should avoid dangerous actions. All, particular, all participants in soccer have to be acquainted with the signs and symptoms of head injury. Um, that's pretty common. All players with suspected concussion should be examined and treated. That's as well, it should be emphasized. Soccer balls and their size have to be adjusted according to age and properly inflated. This is important, right? Um, a small soccer ball should be used for small children, right? And then it should increase as we go up. This is my favorite one. So that children should strictly avoid hitting the ball with their head, especially repeated hitting, due to so far unclear short-term and long-term effects of bouncing a soccer ball on their head. And so, um, first of all, children. Children do not have necessarily good control of their neck muscles and stability of their head. 
And so if we're repetitively hitting um, the head when they're 12 or 13, it might not be the best thing for them. Um, and this goes also into, into females. Females generally have longer and thinner necks than males. And so again, they don't have as good stability over their head. So every time we head the ball, the head may move more and therefore the brain inside also moves as well. And so I think it should be pretty clear that heading should not be allowed in children like pre-high school. It may even go up to like freshman year that those, those children should not be heading, heading the ball in soccer. Um, and then approaches to improve this might be good head and neck strengthening exercises for both males and females to prevent injury going down the road. And then also uh, visual, the visual system can also be really important to avoid um, people kind of coming out of, uh, coming from different angles at you and you just to move the head and avoid those um, that might be happening when one is trying to head the ball when another opponent is as well. And so uh, that concludes those papers for today. But I really wanted to, to share this one because I know that there is a lot of concern over the last couple of years about concussions, especially concussions in sports and athletes. And in my opinion, I don't think that any young student athlete should be told they can't play a sport, but I do think there should be the proper regulations and rules um, in place to prevent head injuries and prevent concussions as well. Um, and there are so many benefits of team sports that they, they should be, uh, these student athletes should be able to play them through high school and beyond if they, if they wish to choose so. So hope everyone enjoyed this one. Please leave your comments or questions below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks again and stay healthy.